can then um, contribute some of their time, dedicate some of their time to um, doing things like taking shifts in the control room to be part of the uh, performance related uh, tasks that go into uh, collecting the data for, for our physics analysis. So we would sit at one of these chairs and then we have some automated monitoring systems and basically just look for, for anything that might be going wrong. Um, these things now are looking into the cavern so you can see little corners of the detector, but it's a lot of scaffolding that it's hard to look out. Um, <laughs> yeah, not super exciting in the control room right now. <laughs> Other questions? That are required to to bend the protons around the ring. Right, yes. So the protons are very uh, highly energetic and they require a large magnetic field in order to keep them in this 27 kilometer uh, circumference. Uh, we use niobium titanium superconducting magnets. Um, they're cooled with superfluid liquid helium down to just 1.9 electrons on the photons. They are they're stopped at that point. They're absorbed by the detector in order for us to measure their energy. Yes. Then the muons fly out, the neutrinos fly out, um, and that takes care of almost everything. Yeah. So they're in either, either they're escaping the detector in the case of muons and neutrinos, and they just fly on quarks and gluons inside of the protons that are interacting with one another. And then the standard model tells you how these particles can interact. So um, you could have two quarks that couple to a W boson, for example, and then the W boson might decay to uh, an electron and a neutrino. So that's how you get the, this new, the other particles. Oh. Yeah. Uh -huh.